Well, welcome back to Design to Heal. My name is Jeff with Dr. Ben Rawl. Man, we got a pastor on the line today. So our, our guest today is Pastor Shane Eidelman, and he is awesome. Like when, So what happened was I've read some of his books, and yeah. I, I knew the name right away. I just didn't know you know, that he was, you know, still preaching or what he was doing. Well, then a, a, a listener, actually, just a random listener, I don't know her. Yeah. She sends me this video and she's like, I think you need to know this guy, right? And I get the clip and the clip is like J- Jesus as the great physician, oh, right? Nice. And I was like, my man, yeah. right? So yeah. I watched this clip. I'm sitting in the parking lot. I watched this clip and I'm like... <laughs> You know, one of those I'm screaming in my, you know, yeah, like this guy gets it. Ben's like he, having some church in the pickup he, truck. Is he, that the deal? He gets it. Well, I've been so frustrated through all of the last few years, especially with the church, sure. that these people were few and far between. And and I'm like, and he does a really masterful job. We'll probably get into it today of just, I think, articulating um, like, 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 you know, that he's just in the lane God has called yeah, him to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. hey, it's my show. Right. So I can have on the people that I want to have on. So I get to have on my, my favorite I, I people I love when here. you get on power trips. I love it. So this Shane, is Pastor Shane is awesome. He's a pastor out on, on the West Coast, which is super interesting. Just that being said, uh, has some interesting history. I mean, that he shares very openly about from addiction to his own health issues mm-hmm. and things and uh, being, you know, radically set free by Jesus. And um, but but very few people, I think, really understand health and healing yeah. and, and doing that the way that he does. I've already talked more than I want to, but welcome to the show, Pastor Shane. Hey guys, it's great to be on. I'm just just honored to help out and help some of the listeners. I think encouragement right now in these days is so important. Well, well let, hang t- on, Pastor. We really have you on to help Ben out. So just there's uh, there's some work that okay, needs to be done. Can we well, start out with that? And maybe you know there's some listeners yes, out there that go, man, if he can that. straighten this guy out, I already we're in good warned shape. him. I warned him before the show. Jeff will try these games, and so this is. I knew he. I knew you would try you this. Preempted no, I love me. It. Yeah, yeah. That's what happened here. Here we go. Oh man. So, Pastor, will you give us a little bit of your background for our listeners? Um, so just they know a little bit of your body work, a little bit of your history, and then we'll we'll dive into some of the the meat and potatoes of what you've been doing yeah. these last few years. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, stay in my lane or that God, you know, something like that. God calls us to different, different callings. And, um, he, I'm actually in California in Los Angeles County, believe it or not. That's crazy. So, um, interesting. Yeah. God puts us where he wants us. Right. So a very long story short is I grew up and, uh, struggled with my weight and, you know, kind of uh, barely graduate high school, speech impediment, kind of a dyslexia and just, you know, that fat kind of chubby, stupid kid. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, self, self-esteem goes along with that and began drinking at an early age, probably 12 years old mm-hmm. and uh, realized I really like it. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously, when I graduated high school, that became even more of a problem, more of a problem and kind of got it under control. I was a weekend you know, they call it weekend drinker. It could do good, do fine Monday through Friday. And I started working at 24 hour fitness. I don't know if you know what that is sure, yeah, in your it. area. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was one of the fastest growing fitness companies in the world. Basically family fitness centers start in San Diego. We merged with 24 hour Nautilus and that's how it became 24 hour fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, I started to get heavily into steroid use. Uh, and so I would read up on, you know, Sustanon 250, Anadrol, Anavar, Equipoise, Decadurable, and, and just learning how it affects the body. And, and that really, you know, increased my, my strength and my weight, probably 270 pounds, just, you know, at, uh, not even 20 years old and hmm. kind of that self-esteem issue. And of course, there's, there's problems with that, you know, roid rage. The reason they call it that is you're getting so much extra testosterone that, you know, anger is very, mm. you know, very real, but long story short. So I went into 24 hour fitness and God began to just bring the prodigal son home. Um, you know, it had this, this idolatry and money and a custom home in my twenties and, and everything started to fall apart. Uh, everything relationally, financially, emotionally, and, uh, just cried out and said, all right, Lord, I'm done. I, I surrender everything. And mm. that was, that was a turning point around 1999, or 2000, but it took a year, you know, to really, um, that's why people need to be encouraged just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you don't struggle. Mm. <laughs> Som- mm. Sometimes the struggle is h- harder, mm. you know, because now the, en- the enemy's after you and you've got a, this, you know, this battle going on in, inside. So, uh, and then from that came speaking engagements and I wrote my first book. My mom helped me edit it, which was good because I'm, I wasn't good in English. And, and then more books came from that. And then eventually we planted the church. 
And um, but with that calling, I noticed when I resurrender my life and just just filled with the Spirit, the Bible comes alive, right? That worship comes alive, and what else followed was boldness. Oh. And I wasn't used to that. I was a very timid, people pleasing, oh. you know, person. And now now this boldness is is just starting to resonate. And so that that flows into my preaching. Um, and it's that that's also a different calling. Not every pastor is is uh, just you know, really bold about issues. Uh, but you have to make sure you're really broken too, <laughs> really oh. humble and broken or that boldness, that boldness can be arrogance oh. and mean spirited. And, and that that's not good. So I have a background in health and fitness. I've seen thousands of people heal, heal their bodies by taking care of their bodies. Uh -huh. And so I, I, I see the parallel between the physical and the spiritual, you know, Try eating junk all week, getting four hours of sleep every night and see how productive you are. Yeah. You know, so, so we see that the physical affects the spiritual. So I bring that into the preaching sometimes from time to time. Um, you know, we've got a podcast on that. I talk about health and fitness, but also theological issues, political issues. I think we need to be really involved in speaking the truth in this, this day and age with all these false narratives and agendas out there. So that's yeah. the five minute version. No, it's, it's important because I think, and I, and that's, you know, how I, you know, became, actually I became aware of you before, you know, the COVID stuff and before even the health stuff, it was just some books you had written about the founding of America and, and some things like that. And I was like, man, this is just, this is just good, intelligent, you know, teaching. And then um, of course, like I said, of course, you know, we're a faith based wellness show. And so I'm always trying, cause what, what cause here's what happens sometimes pastors, pastor, people will say things like, you know, um, you know, well, they don't, you know, I don't, I don't ever hear that from the pulpit, right? So they think maybe the totality of their faith is maybe what they're hearing from the pulpit that Sunday, right? So if my pastor says, hey, we're not going to talk about that here, for example, right? Then they think it must not matter. Maybe right. it must not be something I need to address. Hey, my pastor said, hey, we're just going right. to focus on the gospel. And so that's all, you know, this kind of these, these kind of catchy terms that happen, uh, especially during the last few years. And so I say this, I see the same thing happen in healthcare where it's like, we just, we're not going to talk about that. Maybe we throw you on a prayer list, but God for, and bring you some casseroles and some soda pop to your house at night and cookies and think we're helping you. And I get upset about that because there's people, people needlessly suffering. See, sometimes people are told, like when you speak out or when you say some of these things, I'm sure you're called out for different reasons, right? You're called a, doesn't matter, different words, right? You can be called all sorts of things, but like you said, doing it, doing no, it. No, not today. To, to, yeah. Today, I haven't been called anything. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> well, maybe after this show, but I'm joking. Uh, no. I'm joking. It's, <laughs> yeah, right. it's, it's nonstop, a yeah, nonstop. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, will, you funny. will you take us through, um, cause you were California and I know I listened to some of your work and you know, you guys got some other great pastors out there that have uh, stayed in the fight. And the thing I'm, I think is unique about you. One of the things pastor is, and I want you to speak on this because, um, you've said, Hey, you've shared stages with a lot of, of different pastors and, and preachers and teachers that you don't maybe agree with everything on, right. Whether that's, you know, cessationism or something, I don't need to talk about that, but I'm just saying, so, you know, but these, you're with these brothers and sisters out there and, and, and people in the faith and you, but you, you're very good at articulating how you still love and appreciate to a point their, their work, but there's certain, you may get to a certain point where, Hey, now this one, we did, we did leave we left the gospel, right? This one, we're outside of scripture. This one, I can't go along on the ride with and iron sharpening and iron in that. So do you mind just talking about how you navigated uh, these COVID years a little bit? You held the line, but I think you did it with a way that with love and grace that I often struggle with. So I'm actually really, Jeff's joking, but I am actually looking for some, some, some guidance in that. So give us your perspective on that. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of good issues you brought up. And the, the thing is with getting along with other pastors, it's really if we agree on the essentials, that's what unity is. So we can differ on, you know, end times theology, rapture, all millennialism, like you said, sensationism, <laughs> continuationism, complementarian. You know, the, you can disagree on those, but the essentials are what keep us together. And so what I found is there's actually probably four different things at work. And it's, it's funny, you tied it, tied it in together, maybe not knowingly, but a lot of pastors don't speak about physical Ill, Ill, issues, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, diet or, or physical. And also, you know, a lot of pastors don't talk about what was going on during COVID mm -hmm. and um, how to, you know, how to take a stand. But to answer your question, and I'm a work in progress. So what I'm about to say, I have not mastered. So I don't want the listeners to think right. I have, but 
in order to speak boldly into our culture. And like you said, you know, we can get worked up and, and anger. It's okay to have righteous indignation. You know, what's going on in our nation today with, uh, I, you know, I won't list everything, but you know, the, yeah. with the agendas and the, the, the preschool library readings, and it's just out of control what we have in California as well. Um, and so it's okay to be angry, you know, righteous indignation. Jesus was angry when he threw the money changers out and God, God, it, one of his characteristics, you can see that, that he hates sin. So it's okay to have that, but I have to make sure I spend enough time in the prayer closet where I'm broken before God and humble before God and father, I don't want to go out here and say this, help my heart, look at my heart, mm. get my heart right. Lord, I need to humbly speak your truth. And during during uh, the the COVID era, I actually took a sabbatical and I fasted, I would say, you know, 40, 45, 50 days mm. out of the 100 days I was off and praying and fasting two, three, four, five hours a day. And I realized the only reason I'm saying that is for this reason is the more time I spent with God, the bolder I became. Mm. The less time I spent with mm. God, the mm. more, you know, laid back. I don't want to confront issues. I don't want to upset people. Mm. And so there is a correlation there with, with, with time with God and that boldness. But I think, you know, it's important if we're not spending significant time in the word and prayer and worship, humbling ourselves, then what we say is not going to come across right. Um, for sure. I think, but yeah. to also answer your yeah. question, there's four, Oh, go ahead. Well, yeah, no, I just, I just, anything, I've got it. yeah, I just think for, for people that are listening, especially because, because, and it, it, this is, it's just good. I don't want to even say advice because that doesn't do it justice, but it's an important reflection as a person of faith. Cause we can very quickly, I think one of the terms I heard you say is right. We can, we can actually become kind of wrongly judgmental, right? Like there, we're definitely called to hate the things that God hates. Like this is not a debate. This is, this is not where confusion right. should lie, but then often what comes out can be seen. And listen, at some point, I think you've talked about this too, and in in the, you'll talk about this, but, and there, at some point you're, you know, you know, Hate, truth sounds like hate to hate people to hate the truth. Like understand you're never going to please everybody. Right. But we often let that, no, we can let right. that stop us from ever speaking. That's what I see happen a lot too. So know what you know and, 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 and make sure you're rooted in truth and make sure you've, like you said, you're, that you're, that you're prayed up. And I don't mean that frivolously at all. I mean, that's a very, very, very important, uh, uh principle um, that you can, so you can be absolutely right about an issue, but you can still be an absolute jerk. All jerk, right. And, uh, and I've done yeah. that before. So yeah, no, great point. So, so what's number two, pastor? Well, and even on that point, yeah, I yeah. said, you know, you, the, the truth will offend, but my attitude shouldn't. Mm, mm. That's, that's the, well, that's what tilts the scale. And then also when you talk about, you know, you, uh, people who maybe don't like what you're saying sure. and how, how do you juggle that? Well, I would, I always look at the character of the critic. Mm -hmm. Remember those three words, the character of the critic. Are these people spirit filled believers who truly love me in the ministry? And they're offering, you know, Hey Shane, you're being a little too hard. You're being yeah. too, then that, God uses that to sharpen iron. But you know, that's why I don't look at the thousands of comments. I don't read, I don't respond. It's what's, what's the point. Yeah. You know, I don't even know these people. Right. Um, but anyway, so, why, why pastors with, let's just even talk about, and we can tie it yeah. in with COVID, but why they're silent on, I think, uh, helping people in the area of health and fitness is a couple of different things. Number one, they lack the knowledge. You know, they just, they don't know, or they themselves love fast food and yeah. tons of caffeine and sugar. And so they're not going to, you know, they're not going to talk much about it. Yeah. They've never, a lot of pastors are overweight. A lot of leaders, how many pastors are overweight because they've given in to to gluttony and it's, it's a hard topic. Yeah. And so, you know, and they don't know, you know, the worst thing you can do, you got all these people coming to your church with type two diabetes and you're going to feed them donuts and coffee. Right. I mean, golly, yeah. you know, that's, I know it's about, as, that's about as silly gracious, as the, but, it's about as silly as the hospitals calling themselves healthcare and you show up and they're, you know, feeding you Coca-Cola, you know, Coca-Cola with your, you know, cancer yeah. treatment, right. It doesn't make any sense, but yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Drinking. Well, I won't name the drink case, yeah. you know, but there's, you know, these, <laughs> yeah. these, these, these and then also a lot of pastors, a lot of people just don't want to offend. Like, I don't want to offend. Right. But, the, but, but the truth offends, there's just no way around it. So they're, they, they look out and they say, man, half my congregation are, are, are struggling with obesity. They've got all these health issues. Gosh, I don't want it. You know, man, I don't want to rock the boat, but when you rock the boat, people sit up straight. Mm. When you step on toes, they get their feet out of the way. Mm. And so I've noticed that the people to really change, really, I'm talking about really change. They need conviction. Huh. 
They need to be hit with that word of God sledgehammer and just, wow, and be convicted. That's right. I need to work on that. Now, out of 100 people, maybe 10 will leave the church. The other 90 will embrace the conviction, yeah. right? So it's, 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 that's what's happening. They don't want to offend people. They don't have knowledge. And also it is, it is their calling. Now I wouldn't, because God called me to do this. Not every pastor is going to talk about health and fitness and sure. diabetes and fasting and autophagy and stem cells and telomeres <laughs> and, you know, how it affects the body, but, but you know, it's part of my calling. So that, 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 that's a, a no brainer. And then I hear this a lot. I don't know if you guys, I just, I just saw it on Facebook recently, you know, pastor pro, a bodily exercise profits a little, mm, you know? Mm. And so that's their, that's their excuse to stay 60 pounds overweight and die 25 years mm. early and not be productive towards mm. the end of their life. Mm. Well, the Bible actually says when comparing it to spiritual things, it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't compare, right? Of course. If, right. But also it says profits a little. So there is a little bit of profit even now, right now, taking care of this incredible gift that God has given us. And I know when I'm overweight, when I'm not eating good, I'm just, I'm not a, I could be a better parent, a better father, a better pastor, a better leader. We can improve in so many areas when we take care of this, this gift that God has given us. So, you know, and I, I I've had, I've, up the, I've noticed people that, and I don't want to get too nitpicky, but just to that last comment you said, where, <laughs> you know, compared to spiritual, what I have found in my experience when I deal with people regarding issues like that is it's often like, I actually would be, be okay if they were actually then doing that, right? It's like when I meet these certain times, certain churches say, I'm just focused on the gospel, but then I know what you preach and I've listened to enough and you're actually not even doing that. You're actually following oftentimes right. the narrative of the rest. So I actually, like you said, I have the respect for the, the sold out pastor on that issue that says, hey, just to let you know, you may not see me running a marathon because I'm just so focused on you know the spiritual side. I'll be like, all right, I can live with that, right? I, I, I can understand that. <laughs> But that's not what often happens. And so I know we're kind of splitting hairs no, there, but it's no. still, it's true, you know? Well, you, you brought up a great point. And, you know, near me within an hour and 15 minute drive, you know, John MacArthur, right. Jack Hibbs and right. Rob McCoy, and, you know, and they're, they're not, they're not talking about these yeah. issues of health and fitness, nor should they, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's not their calling, but, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to say this. I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule, but, you know, over the last three years I've dealt with, talked with, I've been to, you know, I was at, spoke at Turning Point USA Pastors Conference, and right. there's a thousand of pastors there, and and in my and now just from my perspective, when they say, "Hey, I'm just called to preach the gospel," that usually means they're being very cowardly in other areas. That's that's just a you're not going to hear solid biblical preachers, even if they don't talk about health and fitness, yeah. and all these, you're not going to hear them say, Hey man, I just, I just preach the gospel because that, that means they're being challenged mm. on all these other areas. Why aren't you talking about the aborting of children? Why aren't you talking about LGBTQ issues? Why aren't you talking about these things? Oh man, I just preached the gospel. So nine mm. times out of 10, it's an excuse to hide cowardliness. Yeah. That's a, that's a well, um, every time I hear it. And, and, you yeah. know, and I, and I think, you know, anybody, and again, I, I know we're getting stuck here. It's worth getting stuck here because, but for a person that's listening, it is. you know, you, you, if, if, if there's so many, I, I, I really struggle with that excuse because I mean, anybody, if you've, if, when you read the scriptures or if you've, if you've been saved, you've had this encounter, you've had this experience where like, I would be the first one to say that, that, that the gospel changed everything. But as from your position, and I feel this way, it's weird. We almost have this opposite role. I feel in a sense, I feel as a doctor, my responsibility was to make sure people know who the healer is, right? Like, so that's my yep, mission in my exactly. office is if I'm going to talk about healing, I have to talk about the healer. And then in, in your world, it's almost like, well, if I'm going to talk about, you know, the healer, I better probably talk about what that looks like so people can grasp that. Because if I don't talk about that, the world has sold them, sold them such a perverted lie regarding healthcare that they may think healthcare is you know, an abortion with some pills and, and, and some, you know, antidepressants and some high blood pressure meds and some, you know, diabetes drugs and my heartburn drugs and my sleeping pills and my COVID jabs and my other jabs. And because they you could, because you pastor didn't help them understand they'd been bamboozled. You didn't help them see they were being lied to and understanding that there is a propaganda machine that has intentionally tried to lie to them since probably before they were born. I'm sorry, but you do have to kind of kick them in the pants a little bit because they've been lullabied to sleep thinking that pills, potions and lotions is health care, but it's not. And all you've said before and I know stuff you've read and that I've read and listened to of yours and I might be more bold than you 
in this space only because I'm comfortable saying it, but like, just put where, just put God first. That doesn't mean that you're never going to take a drug or never going to have a surgery and all that kind of stuff. And we don't even have to go down that rabbit trail. I'm just asking you, is he even on the table? Right. Did you even is he even on the oh, table about that stuff? And that's where, listen, exactly. You don't have to get up and be a health expert as a pastor to, to preach on health. You can absolutely get up there and say Jehovah Rapha. You can absolutely get up there and talk about creating your likeness and image. You can absolutely get up there and say we have an epidemic in this country where we take all these pills, potions, lotions and dope. And we're just as sick in the church as outside of the church. And our kids are killing them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, you know what I'm saying. This is what you do. But like, that's where I'm like, so what what say you on that? Sorry, you lit me up there a little man bit. i love i think i think we're going to make that one minute into a youtube <laughs> clip he can that have was, it <laughs> that, that was so and you know again i i want to be careful because i know yeah. a lot of pastors um that are that are working hard and it's not their wheelhouse and understand and but i do when i look out there and you know we're going to pray for we're going to pr- i mean what are we praying for nowadays diabetes heart mm-hmm. conditions uh even like mental challenges yeah. anxiety um, it, all the things we're praying for, I don't know if people realize a lot of that can be corrected by your diet and lifestyle. Absolutely. You, you don't have to go on statin, statin drugs for the rest of your life or, you know, uh, blood thin or Coumadin and, and these, these types of things and, and diabetes, what, 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 when you go to your doctor for type two diabetes, not one no type two, they tell you, okay, we're gonna have to get you on insulin. We're gonna have to do this. There's really no healing that, yeah. that's going to happen. We're just going to help you you know, we're going to help you through this. And, and you give somebody who's insulin resistant, you give them more insulin when insulin is a fat storage hormone versus glucagon is, you know, the, the, is, is, is much better to increase that through fasting. And so you're offering them nothing that's going to help. Yeah. And so I can pray for their diabetes. Sure. I can pray. And I believe in God will, God will heal in spite of us sure. regardless, you know, but how many people are sick and unhealthy simply because they're not taking care because I, I, I think, you know, I, I'm going to be a little, little, yeah. little controversial here, yeah. but I think asking God to heal us when we know we are in open rebellion mm. against being good stewards of this body yeah. is, you know, it, it, it's, it's probably something we need to look at. Yeah, in think, other words, yes, it, God is convicting me. I'm 50 pounds overweight. Or, for example, God is convicting me. I need to stop eating all this sugar and drinking yeah. and having all this. God is convicting me, but I'm going to ignore these convictions hmm. and instead just come and and pray for healing. Now, again, I'm not minimizing yeah, praying for healing. Absolutely. I think God does things in spite of us, but he also calls us to use wisdom and make be good stewards. Do you? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's so... We, you know, it, 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 it almost was like you mentioned a little earlier. It is almost a litmus test in a sense, meaning if you won't, it, it, because the, the it's changed so much, right? We, you know, churches can't 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 speak out on anything. It's affirm everything, right? You're, gosh forbid, you are accused of, you know, then yeah, you're fat shaming or lifestyle shaming or you know, uh, you know, just personal choice. It get just like, and then it rose to this, like, like God doesn't really care, like, like he's like he's cool with it. I assure you, my friends, and I, I haven't really talked like this in a while, but I assure you, listeners, if. If you, this, this body that God gave us, it says creating his likeness image. The only thing that was created in his likeness and image. I like you, you live in California, beautiful, you know, and we live in Florida and listen, I love waterfalls and trees and rainbows. It's all beautiful, but those are not the things created in his likeness and image. We don't, we don't worship those things. Those are, those are not what we're put here, you know, to, to, to consume us. The thing that is amazing is what, that, what he created. And so for us to destroy that, for us now, like you said, I'm okay with ignorance, ignorance, meaning once you come into awareness, then that's when we change I'm fall under conviction. But just in very simple terms, even take, I don't want to say take spiritual out of it, but just for a second, it would be no, if, if, if you bought your kiddo a car, a brand new car or something like this, and then they just trash the thing, thrash the thing, hot rod it, burning the tires, revving the engine. Like that's just, that's disrespectful across the board, right? Matter of fact, our, our caring for our vessel, caring for our bodies is a form of worship to who the one who gave it to us. But it's been so bastardized. It's been so poo-pooed. And it's like you said, we've got more people destroying themselves and then either blaming God, often blaming him, and say, why did you do this to me? And it's literally laughable to me. Now, 
You and I both know people that have, quote, lived perfect lives. And I say this to other people, Pastor. I say, listen, people die of other ways from heart disease and cancer, right? Like people get run over by trucks and fall off of ladders and, and accidents happen and, and things that we can't explain. So this isn't about, I, I don't want to turn health into an idol, right? I don't want to turn, this isn't the point. Like, oh, so you better eat perfect and exercise perfect. And no, 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 that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying understand that you were Pay here, you were purchased for a price, right? That this is not a that your body's temple of the Holy Spirit. And I know these are kind of overused terms to some degree, or not used enough. Maybe it's a better way of saying it, but well, not understood yeah. that well. And so people have more faith in pills, potions, lotions, or a mask on their face or a jab in their arm than they do the God that made them. And because of that, we're seeing a watering down of actually, I think, the gospel. So I'm gonna I want to shut up. You talk for a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, you hit a couple of things that probably should be, um, you know, <clears throat> brought to the surface a little more fat shaming. Cause we do hear that. And mm. fat shaming is making fun of people. Mm. What we're doing is helping people. And in order to help, you've got to, you've got to speak the truth and love. When I was with 24 hour fitness and help, I mean, I would see how many people a day, 12, 15 okay. a day for a year. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of people. It was the ones you shot straight. You said, listen, 30 pounds in 30 days, not realistic. That belt isn't going to work. That pill isn't going to work long, long term. You've got to make health a lifestyle. You need to get your butt into this gym or somewhere and start and you shoot them straight like a coach. Hmm. And so, it, but, but, but all these terms, fat shaming, you know, uh, homophobe or yeah. all, all these terms, you know, neo Nazi right wing conspiracy, wh- yeah, whatever that Christian means. nationalist. I, no I think that's the one now that's getting popular. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, it, the only reason is I can't, I can't debate your truth, Shane. So I'm going to call you a name. Mm. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't have an answer. I don't have a comeback. You're right. And I'm wrong, but I'm going to call you names mm. and go after your character. Mm. So that's what this is. And it's not fat shaming. I've, I've, I've struggled with my weight. I mean, I'm 6'2", 215 pounds, <laughs> you know, I probably should be 180. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like, you know, I can't, can relate, but we can make a difference. Also, I'm, I'm convinced that all of us are convicted many times about the choices we're making in our lifestyle. So it's not that people don't know what to do. It's they don't apply what they know to do. And that's actually the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Mm. You know, knowledge knows it, wisdom applies it. And so, and I can say this now praying with thousands of people, literally over the years, thousands of people without a, without a shadow of a doubt, not even, not even a close second place. The majority of times I've seen people get healed is when they take control of their health and their lifestyle and they ask God to help them. Mm. I get emails from people coming off of caffeine. Now their anxiety disorder is gone Mm. completely off their med off their medication. They've never felt better in their life. They've never had deeper sleep. They've all these healings taking place because they changed their lifestyle. Now that doesn't mean we still pray for healing. We still pray, but you know, you also have to look at the context in scripture 2000 years ago um, there was an AMPM on every corner. There was, you know, obesity. Yeah. Obesity is only really, yeah. I think, since the 1970s or eight. You know, processed food. You look yeah. at pictures in New York. I have a documentary on fat. On it's called my 40 day fast on Amazon Prime, and we show pictures of the 1950s compared to now. Nobody was over obese in New York, really, and like because we're walking, we're moving, yeah. and so you know, I, I think we've got to really look at this 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 epidemic childhood childhood obesity now is an epidemic what's the obesity rate in our nation right now and our healthcare system cannot cannot um sustain this much longer not only that um it it doesn't the current healthcare system yeah. you know in physicians i love physicians i have friends that are physicians and nurses but they only have four hours really of of health and nutrition training yeah. they're trained to you know put a band-aid on it temporarily and so you know they won't they won't the, the, our current healthcare system will not fix the problem yeah hey pastor shane just, uh, for a second i want to flip gears there's a statement or a kind of an attitude that i feel like i hear a lot in the church and i want to know if you if you feel like you've heard this sentiment and if so let, let's identify where that comes from and then speak to the you know to the incorrectness of it but the idea that you know people would say well i just you know i just can't wait to to get to heaven to get rid of this body you know to shake off this old body or whatever and as often as, as an you know as an excuse <laughs> yeah. for for bad whatever like I, to me 
I mean, as as a uh, as a as a fellow pastor and seminary trained, whatever. To me, I, I hear I hear Greek philosophy in that. To me, like this is no different than Socrates and Aristotle and Plato. These guys that believe that the material world was completely wrong. It's not a Jewish way of thinking. It's a Greek way of thinking. But I don't think most people are thinking that way. Of course, they're just making these statements and and whatever. Do you hear that? And what's your What's your response? What's your take on on that whole idea that this man I just got to get this this body, you know, this body that's called a temple, by the way. Yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, and let me know if I don't answer it completely, but um, I think I know exactly. It also goes like the question also goes like this: Why not just enjoy my life mm. and eat what I want, and not worry about this? You mm. know, kind of the same thing. Or, or Kevin's coming. What's the big deal? I actually just had this conversation with somebody close to me, and uh, I have it often. Uh, and I think it's the same type of question, but do you want to, do you want to, as you're waiting for heaven, don't you want to be productive? Hmm. Don't you want to feel better? Don't you want to experience joy and peace because you're taking care of this wonderful gift and have better energy for your kids and your grandkids? What about if heaven is 30, 40, 50 years from now? Hmm. Well, you want to, you want to live the last 10 years. It's, it's statistics show that now that the majority of people, the last 10 years, a whole decade of their life is going to be spent in an assisted living home where people are assisting you mm. even in your late 60s, 70s. I mean, that shouldn't be yeah. Uh, as, as all. So, so I don't know if I answered that right, but the whole key is productivity and pleasing God. I, I, I can witness to more people. I can be more productive. I can, I, I can resemble the gospel. I discipline my body lest I bring it, I bring yeah. it in subjection, Paul said, or when I preach to others, I myself am dis- disqualified if I constantly give into the lust of the flesh. You know, I, I, this is, and this is maybe a little rough teaching as well or, or thought, but like, I mean, if you take that idea to the extreme, then the art, like I remember somebody saying this one time, if it's all just about that, then just when a person gets saved and gets baptized, just keep them under the water and finish the job, get them right to heaven. Right now, that is a horrible statement <laughs> right. right there. Yeah. But like, clearly there is hey, a, do you purpose. want to ordain Ben and bring him on staff? <laughs> yeah. There is a purpose to yeah. our lives on this planet, right? That God, that God has for us. And so that is such a selfish statement that has no concern for others for the the life that God gave you it's really but but the fact that things like and I hear that Jeff because I've heard it you've heard you said and then what pastor just said the other way which is I just want to enjoy my life and I think both of them uh, those statements are the wrong they're just they're so off base that they don't even make sense once you realize you know what the what has been done for you right yeah. that you were like i remember this one girl one time and and, and pastor i want i know for sake of time i want to give you some 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 final thoughts here i want you to be able to share what you want to share here and let people know how they can follow you and listen to your you're very generous on your website you have all your sermons up there and great teaching and your podcast is awesome um but there was um you know what when when we think about how do we marry this? How do we, um, somebody might be sitting under, I'm just going to say they're sitting under teaching or they've never really thought of it like this before. They've never been challenged. They, they, they're right now they're listening They're They are, they are 60 pounds overweight. They are on some medications. They don't want to be on. They're living on, they're addicted. You know, I know you've battled with addiction in your life. You're very open about it. You've written books about that. You talk about that, but we can be addicted to food and we can be addicted to internet. We can be addicted to porn, not just absolutely you know, Cheetos or heroin, you know, um, and things like that. So I just want to, because although you're known for being bold, I also, when I listen, or partly known for that, when I listen to you, you also are incredibly encouraging. You're incredibly um, empathetic to the struggles and the suffering and and the challenges. And so I don't want a person to get the wrong. I know we ranted here a little bit and there's a time for that. That's more my natural personality. And and, and, and maybe that's how I'm bent and maybe you a little bit too. But, but what, because you get these people, right? And and I know you've had this conversation more or as many times as I have working in healthcare. So what do you say to that? What do you want to say to somebody listening, sitting on the other side of this so they don't misunderstand what we're talking about here? No, it's great. And I also want to point out when you said, you know, the, the truth about healthy people even get cancer. Yeah. So it's not about, you know, perfection and trying to find this, this perfect, you know, diet that I'm going to live forever, but it's yeah. just, it's about productivity. And uh, also if we go a little long on time, that's fine. Okay. It's, it's no biggie at all. If you want to, if you want to bring I'll out talk some more all things. Day, but also I should say, I should, yeah, I should also say that when people say, you know, I'm going to go to heaven or I can, you know, why not enjoy life? 
it, we, we know it's really just an excuse. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's all that is. It's just an excuse. I don't want to change my lifestyle. I don't want to be healthier. And so here's what I'm going to say. So it has no bearing. It has no merit. It has no truth to it, but that that's why they say it yeah. um, beca- because of that. And so, yeah, to encourage people and you'll look at every single, just about not everyone, but most of the prophetic books of the Bible, right? The Isaiah, Jeremiah's, mm-hmm. Ezekiel's and Joel's and Amos's and Obadiah's and Jonah's, Micah's, they would they would convict the people, but then they would build back up. You know, if you return to God, he will return to you. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. So, you know, that that's a good model. We have to have that conviction because the conviction says, okay, man, I'm glad he spoke the truth to me. I'm I'm glad he told me the truth. Now I need to make changes. And now comes the the, the comfort and the encouragement versus the shaming, you know, that's the difference. Hmm. So um, we actually put all my books. I don't know if you know this, all my books are available as free downloads right now on the church website. Hmm. So wow. Westside Christian, Westside, Westside Christian fellowship.org again, Westside Christian fellowship.org um, all the books, they can click free e download and they can start right now when they hear this. They can go to my fasting book, my books on nutrition, my my addiction books right now and be encouraged because the books are very encouraging. But what I would tell people is, listen, all of us make mistakes. It's about falling forward. I do not eat perfectly. I do not exercise perfectly. I do not fast perfectly. I do not pray for it perfectly. But God wants us to fall forward and to get back up and to keep fighting and give yourself realistic goals, 30 pounds in 30 days. I want to look like the rock. You know, I want to look <laughs> like, you know, the, first, first, we don't want to, you know, we shouldn't be doing that, but give yourself a long term. Okay. In six months from now, and because this is a lifestyle change and so many people have a diet mentality in their mind. Okay. January 1st, I'm going to go on right. this whatever diet. Okay. I'm going to do this for 30 days. I'm going to do this Daniel faster. Okay. A short-term solution is not going to fix your long-term problem. Yeah. It has to be a, now you can use some of these sure. things. I yeah. think the Daniel help, you know, Dan, Daniel healthy eating program is great. Um, and, but it's gotta be a lifestyle of getting up, falling forward, eating God given foods that give life to the body. So I've got great energy, I'm more productive. I'm trying to get off as much caffeine as possible and nicotine and alcohol and trying to wean and trying to just be the, a better person, body, soul, and spirit. And so you, I would encourage a person 60 pounds. Hey, where are you going to be this time in six months? In one month, you're going to start feeling great. In yeah. two weeks, once you get through the withdrawals, you're going to start, you know, because success and discipline leads to joy and peace and fulfillment. Because mm-hmm. we're either we're either caught we're either caught in a cycle of defeat mm-hmm. and failure mm-hmm. and fall back into our addictions, mm-hmm. defeat, failure, shame, fall back into our addictions, and then we just live there. Mm-hmm. So at some point, we've got to break out of that and and fall forward and get back on track. So since you since you said I can have a few more minutes with you, um, I I want to bring up one other topic that that I run into a lot because I'm a I love reading I love uh, learning I just and, and even in healthcare it's just and, and things like that so but what I find is um, I'll read a great book but there'd be there'll be you know there'll be sections in there that I just very much disagree with right so maybe they'll use a metaphor about. For example, in my world, sometimes I use a metaphor about like vaccination that I just think is totally off the mark, right? But they still said great things. Do you follow me? So like 80% of the book was awesome. Yep. But then they'll be like, oh, hey, the reason that we eat like that is because we've evolved that way for nine zillion years. And that's why I need to go have a cupcake. I'm like, and that's where I get frustrated. And I heard you talk about this a little bit because there's kind of two questions here, Pastor, that I want to kind of wind down with. And, and it may take us a while. But one of the things that you do have to keep on the table, I heard you say this is, you know there is a, a woke liberal agenda, and if we if we just if we just act like it's okay and we ignore that, that's a problem. So we there are times where you have to call out the actual situation, okay? And so I want to I want because I think you articulated that well when I heard you talk about that, and then I also want to maybe ask you to give us some advice on some of these popular um, health things that are out there. And you've talked about like Joe Rogan and I listen to Joe and I appreciate much of what Joe says. And then sometimes I just have to kind of roll my eyes, you know, from some of the, from the some of the theology concepts and things like that. And there's other health people that I just, you see this in the health science world where they, they kind of feel like they have to adopt some of the general scientific terms. And I think they're really missing the boat. So two big questions there, but will you take them in whatever order you want? Yeah. And if I, um, 
if I miss something, just let yeah. me know. But the first one was on, you know, when do we call out things? Yeah, um, that are really, work, really are a know, problem. Yeah. Agenda. Yeah. Well, I, well, here's again, it goes back to, I just think as Christians, even of course, pastors, we're, we're just, pray, our prayerlessness is leading to powerlessness. So we're not, we're not prayed up. We're not fasting and humble before God and asking to enter Lord intervene, use me as an intercessor. And then from that boldness, you're going to call out things. Mm. And you know, when, when we're vague, what is vague? Mm, vague mm, is mm. gray. And, and on these areas where there's, it's clearly black and white, good and evil, right and wrong. You can't be vague. You, you that's, <laughs> that's trying to please your audience. Right. Yeah. So um, that's a good word. But yeah. again, it depends on the topic, but with the wokeness, you know, you've got to go to the school district boards and call these people out and the curriculum out. You've got to, uh, with the, the bias in the media and what's really going on, you have to be specific because, you know, this whole separation of church and state, don't be mm. political. Well, in early America, the pulpits were very political. Yeah. Actually, that's where the people would get their information was from the pastor yeah. and the church and the pulpit. Here's what God's word says about yeah taxation and representation. Here's what God's word says about this new legislation. Here's what it's God's word says about the, and, and now the reason, you know, church, separation of church and state, pulpit shouldn't say anything. Don't be political. I mean, all of these political hot buttons now are biblical issues. So there's really, there's, there's just no way to remain vague. Yeah. You've got to be specific and call it out. Yeah. How and, a church um, can't talk about again, gender, that, you know, would be confusing to me, right? When it's the way that, you know. No, I just, yeah, yeah. gosh, I just, I, I just watched a pastor. I won't say his name. Sure. He's kind of popular, but he says, you know what? I'm going to respect somebody's pronouns. And I'm going to call them their pronouns. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that, that's lying. Yeah. I mean, that's you, you, you've got to be the hate, you know, I love you enough to tell you the truth. There's yeah. only men and female. I'm not going to call you they, them when that's, that's linguistically wrong. That's yeah. just doesn't it, it's, it, and it's feeding your, um, your, your, this, the sinful lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and so you do have to be, but, it, but again, here's the key. The truth will offend, but my attitude shouldn't. So I'm not looking to go tell people off. I'm not looking to uh, like, you know, sin sniff and find it and be a modern day Pharisee. Yeah. I want to be a modern day cheerleader, but in order to do that, I've got to, you know, we, we, I call out, you know, some of the, the, the big corporations that are owned most of America and the people who are influencing America. Yeah. And it's just the pulp, the pulpits and, and just many pastors, many Christians are, they, they lack the boldness from being filled with the Holy spirit. That's just the bottom line. Cause the more full you are, the more bold you're going to be from Dietrich Bonhoeffer to Paul and Peter to yeah. uh, Augustine to Justin Martyr to Whitecliffe and Tyndale and Huss and the reformers and Luther and Calvin. And you just, and that's, I think what we're lacking. Uh, is, and that's why many people are, are so, so yeah, vague. That's a good, that's a good, word. I think vague is important to understand, you know, just asking yourself, are you even to yourself, your own language? Are you being, are you being vague? So that the last, the last question, since you are, a pastor and you are, you know, very knowledgeable about health and healing um, just because it is an interest of yours as well. I know that you probably do the same thing I do. It's probably like when I'm listening to pastors preaching, I, I get annoyed sometimes they didn't talk about certain health stuff or they missed the mark there. And then you might, you know, you probably listen to yeah. some of the secular health stuff and go, oh man, if they just had this spiritual perspective, it could be so beneficial or an understanding of God is being created. Do you mind giving our listeners maybe how, how do you navigate that world? How do you navigate some of the stuff out there in health and then see it from a, a godly perspective? Because some of it is good, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So what's your thoughts? Yeah, it's... it's uh yeah, it's funny you said that because, you know, I try to help people and, you know, share different videos from, you know, Alan Goldhammer to sure. Peter Atia, Gary Brecka, Ben Greenfield, yeah. you know, Thomas Delure and, and all these guys that are top, top guys. Um, and Dr. Huberman's really big sure, right now, yeah. you know, with cognitive and yeah. he's, he's talks about faith. I don't know where he's at with that. So um, Dr. Jason Fung and his work with, and Walter, Walter Longo is here with about mm. a mile, uh, hour from me, mm. the head of longevity at USC. And so, yeah, it drives me bonkers when they talk about, I mean, look at the breaking down the cell, right? The ATP and the energy and the mitochondria and how <laughs> autophagy kicks in after fasting yeah. and apoptosis where it destroys the cell. And look at this. Uh, how does the body know to be protein sparing yeah. and go after the fat and not the I know. Like, oh, and then man, they say, I know where well, this is going. You know, yeah. A million years ago, 
Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. a million years ago when we evolved, give me a break. No little single cell amoeba is gonna <laughs> is gonna have this this system that is so complex, so complex. We can't even. I don't think we even understand a fraction agree, of how the I body agree. works. And that's why there's so many different diets. You yeah. know, keto diet and paleo diet and plant based diet, and and I've thoughts yeah. on that as well. If we have a few minutes, it's like they can't bring themselves yeah, to so say I, I, what God created. It's like no, they just they can't say that, right? It's it's they can't give God credit well, you, for you creating. Actually, yeah, you hit the nail on the head five minutes ago when it's academia. Mm. They're too worried about the respect, and maybe they truly believe. I mean, mm, that's sure. what they've been taught evolution. But it's just, it is just, to me, it's corny. To me, I hear this guy that is so smart. Yeah. And then I think, can I say stupid? Sure. I mean, I don't know, you know, foolish. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, man, this is, and they're like, really? We just, you know, in 500,000 years ago, when we started to really evolve, and then we, you know, decide to eat this and eat this, and the body learned to do this. I'm like, yeah. golly, I, man, you, this is. You, you know what I say, Pastor, sometimes is I say, I, I use this to try to help people get a grasp of that sometime. I, I try to say, so, so think about you talked about a cell and i said you know so in all of all of, all of human history however long you want to say that is in all of our scientists and all of our whatever they we've never created one single cell from scratch right we can't build it and put it together and you, you know and and, and no. then say okay life right we can manipulate them we can cut them open we can look at them we can clone them right. we can do all that stuff but we can't create life yet in the you know 40 minutes we've talked you, the body that god made and the the heart that he beats inside of you and the eyes that he gave you that see has made literally millions of those cells and killed thousands of cancer cells and regenerated tissues and created memories and kept your temperature at this rate and breathed without you thinking and made saliva and digested food and like this is it's it's to me it's so laughable like you almost said, they're almost stupid that if we can't appreciate the, the, the innate divine God given wisdom of the body that he created. And to me, it just helps you understand it so much more and appreciate it because see the medical mindset, the academia mindset, I think actually, it actually disempowers. It continues us down this fallacy road of let's just figure it out so we can manipulate it, drug it, yada, yada, yada. I say the, the other one though is like stewardship. I use a plant as an example sometimes. It's like, listen, you don't have to be a scientist about plants to take care of a plant. You got to know a few things. Water no. it, put it in the sun, give it a little bit yep. of food. It tastes a pretty good job. The body God gave us is pretty much the same. Stop messing it up. He did a good job. But the fact that we have to spend trillions of dollars on healthcare every year and we just get sicker. There was a study that came out a few weeks ago that the male uh, long life expectancy is down to 73.3 years, down six years less than women. It's unbelievable. Yet we're taking more of their dope than ever, more pills than ever, more jabs than ever, more testing than ever. If anything, we should be living longer. When people tell me we live longer, I say, stop saying that. What's happened is people... like. Like, that's not true. People lived longer in the past. And what I mean by that, there was some change where, where we, less babies were dying, thank God, right? And most of that improvement, by the way, was through basic hygiene, Pastor. It was through refrigeration and clean water and sewer systems, not because of pills, potions, and lotions. But because of that lie, we go, look what medicine did. Look what science has done. And I'm telling you, it hasn't done that. That is a narrative lie that has perverted how you view God. And now you run to man's buildings and we think, oh, we don't believe in goddesses of, of fertility. Yes, we do. We call them fertility doctors. We call them OBGYNs. And this is a lie that's happened to us where we don't think we have idols. We think it's silly. They worship the golden calf. I'm telling you, you kidding me? Most people worship a doctor or a pill or their medicine cabinet more than they do the God that made them. Now you got me. Now you got me fired up again, Pastor. I'm blaming oh, you for that. I love it. No, that, <laughs> that, that's, I mean, that you just, you summed it up well. Um, and also, yeah, you're right because what we're doing is we're keeping the dead alive longer. Mm. That's usually what I like to say. So, oh yeah, okay, you live you live longer in years, but the quality of your life is severely diminished. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, look at most people by their time. Most people by the time they are sixty five. I mean, they are. They're just not doing well. They Imagine can't out watching get off TV. The floor. They yeah, can't they, 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 yeah. You know, you've seen and, all this stuff. And this so, yeah, you know, and I think we live longer to, in, in that sense, because of comfort. Mm. You know, you're not, I mean, if, if you read, I'm reading a book right now about the Methodist circuit riders in the 1700s in America, you know, in life was, it was hard, mm, mm, you know, with, mm. but also uh, hormesis, you know, you know, sure. hormesis, yeah, how we're exposed to, 
you know, being this whole push on cold water therapy and all. I mean, that's how we were created to be a little bit cold, a little bit hot, a little bit stressed. Don't eat so much, be in a fasted mode a lot. And, you know, that, that really triggers immune response. You know, it's really good for the body. And so, the, yeah, the, yeah, people, they just, they either, they, they either don't know, but I also, mm. you know, I'm even my case, it's the, it's the lazy man's way out. Mm. Just give me a pill. Yeah. I think, and, about, hey, look, we're living, we're living longer, you know, the, pa- the, yeah, the, uh, the fasting and I, and I know you are an expert in that. One of the things I, I I'll give you the last couple minutes here before we hop off. And cause I know that fasting is a big part of your life and I love, I love your perspective. I mean, you have a godly perspective on it, but I love your, your teaching on it. But one of the things I, I like to say when I talk to people about fasting, I, I hear this one a lot. Like I <laughs> they'll say something like if I, the the thought of fasting makes them almost faint, right? They're like, if I, I could never skip lunch. I I could never not eat breakfast. I think I'll, I think I'll die. Right. And I, I laugh to this because exactly what you're talking, not having that, that metabolic flexibility, like you need, if your life is so much so that you can't not eat for a few hours, I'm here to tell you, you are metabolically sick. Like that's it's it, it'd be like if you said walk up this yeah. one flight of stairs and I have to stop at stair four because I can't breathe. The problem's not the stairs. The problem is me, right? And so when people when people so fasting is 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 so helpful, not just physiologically, but identifying addiction, identifying strongholds, identifying comfort, you know, places. I mean, we I don't think we really appreciate how lazy and comfortable we have gotten and how we desire that almost endlessly. And it hasn't helped us. It's made us worse. Again, use any study you want from depression to anxiety to, you know, unhappiness to all all of the things. So you want to give us in these couple of minutes, just your final, maybe your final take on maybe just uh, fasting and maybe share some of your opponents to some of your your resources, because I know you have some great ones. Yeah, I would, I would, I mean, again, all the books are free at the church website, West, Westside Christian Fellowship.org. Yeah. Actually, we're putting some of them on, on audio. So okay. I think you can listen to a few of them on audio for free there at the church website. But, you know, the, the thing with fasting is anytime something is um, absent in the church, when the church over, the church has to be careful that we don't overcorrect, mm. right? Because then it's all about fasting and, and yeah. it, fasting can turn into an eating disorder. Mm. You know, if we're not careful, yeah. you know, and, or an and, idol for sure. And, you know, yeah. my way is an idol. Yeah, absolutely. So I think once, once you say, okay, Lord, I, you know, there's a time for feasting, there's a time for, for fasting, um, you know, give me, Lord, give me that wisdom. But also throughout the Bible, I mean, how many uh, Moses and Ezra and Nehemiah, Esther, David, Paul himself, uh, the Didache early church writings early. I mean, it's just fasting was a part of their lifestyle. The reason is, it's a wonderful opportunity to starve the lusts of the flesh. Uh-huh. You're, you're, you know, the flesh is just go to Starbucks, get uh-huh. me a cake pop, go to uh-huh. fast food, go to this. I want to sleep too long. I, I want to eat too much. I want to drink too much. And the flesh is constantly, you know, at our throat, so to speak. Yeah. So fasting is fasting is a just a time to pray and fast and, 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 and silence that voice of the flesh screaming, wanting more, but also Jesus said, when you give, when you pray, we have no problem with that. But he said, when you fast. (laughs) So, I mean, think about that. He tied it all in together. When you pray, when you give, when you fast, that tells me fast should be a lifestyle. It's not just something where we, Hey, January 1st, I'm going to do this week fast with my church. And I'm going to, I'm going to eat like, uh, uh, you know, pig out the rest of the year or, um, you know, there's a, there's a fasting in our lifestyle and that's why Wesley, John Wesley, the Methodist would do it Wednesdays and Fridays. And, you know, I don't want to get caught up on the yeah. days and legalistic, but there should be, you know, because if we're constantly eating, that's also not healthy. You know, our body was designed to, um, to, for seasons of fasting. Plus the reason fasting is so hard for most people is because when they stop, they're actually, they're actually coming off an addictive substance Mm. or substances try. Okay. You know, I'm going to fast tomorrow. I'm not going to have coffee. Well, okay. You're going to do good for about two hours in the morning. So it's not the food necessarily. It's the addiction to sugar Mm. processed Mm. food. So once you, once you deal with the addictions, fasting, you know, and your body turns from burning glycogen to ketone bodies, ketosis, once it makes that switch, you really lose hunger after about three days. Mm -mm. And it's, 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 
it's it, and you know but even that the keto flu you know that that's if people aren't used to it sure um so i think addiction and then wrong information um we were not what it, do you know where the word breakfast comes from you know most people don't really know that <laughs> i think it comes from, from breaking right? your breaking, fast yeah 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 <laughs> yeah well, yeah and yeah, all well, it also it's, created it's by break- the industry yeah right yeah. exactly yeah so i'm i'm kind of i lean towards um, you know, breakfast used to be in, when I was in the bodybuilding world, you had to have breakfast and eat every two and a half, three hours mm. to keep your metabolic rate up. We all, we know that's not good because insulin rises and insulin sensitivity, but break fast breakfast, breakfast. So, you know, your body's already in a state of by, you know, eight mm. hours in nine hours, 10 hours. in, then autophagy, you know, begins to kick in or keto, you know, your carbohydrate. So it's good to just go a while. I mean, people wouldn't get up and put something in the microwave for <laughs> thousands of years. They would get up and Hey, let's go out and get some chicken eggs or let's milk the goat, fresh goat milk. And and so I, I just think we're just eating too much and too often and the wrong types of foods. So you have addiction, you have the wrong information out there and um, and people not really understanding the biblical model of fasting. Well, Pastor, I think that people that were listening today, they're probably going, man, this this uh, I don't get to hear a pastor talk like this very often and certainly not. Uh, this this knowledgeable about about health and it's obvious that not only do you do you understand the issue at hand but you and 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 practice it in a sense also as for yourself and for your family but I think also um, you understand the responsibility of this you understand about the responsibility of of you know stewarding the flock that God puts in front of you and and trying to speak right. the, the breadth of 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 the gospel and what that means for people and so I know that 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 there's not a lot of you uh, out there and I'm, and I'm thankful that there are some that are willing to share and, 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 and write and teach and, and be outspoken about this because it can be encouraging. And the times that we're heading into, uh, the Lord only knows, but um, we need to have our health, uh, both physically and spiritually, to navigate those things well. It requires us to be able to engage our minds, our bodies, our hearts, our spirits at a high level. And so my prayer for, for uh, all the listeners is that, that something today um, that there, there was not shame in there, that there's something convicts your spirit. Something makes you say, you know what? Yes, that's right. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get a hold of this. I've got to be obedient to the call that God has in my life. And a part of that is stewarding the body that he gave me. All right. There's other parts to it, but that certainly is one of them. And so let this be encouraging. Um, uh, Pastor has some great resources on his personal website or his church's website. You can listen to all of his sermons. You can read his books. You can follow him. You can listen to his podcast. But uh, my friend, I'm so honored that you made time to jump on the the show with us today. Thank you for fighting the fight in California. Holy smokes. And um, just bless your church and uh, the work. And uh, can't wait to have you back on the show to talk again sometime, Pastor. Take care. God bless. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, I'd love to do. That. I think it'll help listeners. And again, all the resources they can start right now when they hear this. They go to westsidechristianfellowship.org. Free downloads. No, no, we're not selling anything. You just open the addiction book or the book on fasting, the book on weight loss, uh, or book. I wrote books on revival, you know, and 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 seeking God with all of our heart. And they just, it's just a matter of them being obedient to what God wants to do. But yeah, it just encourage people. Uh, we're all in this together, but we do have to sometimes speak the truth in love. And it's when you say the hard things, I think that that really matters because when we're vague, people aren't really, you know, convicted or challenged. So um, great job. Great job. I'd love to be on again. Keep me posted. All right. Take care, Pastor. Love you. Bless you. Bye bye. All right, guys. 